yeah, this your boy Drummer, man, and you watching Radiance ENT, Drum Squad, D-Boy Fresh. Hey, yeah, boy. Who is Drummer Boy? If you can describe Drummer Boy anyway, who is Drummer Boy? Um, who is Drummer Boy? I mean, Drummer Boy is a young talent, you know what I'm saying? It just, you know what I mean? It's like swims in a pool of like many different resources, you know what I'm saying? And, you know what I mean, Jungle Boy is somebody who obviously is, is an artistic person, you know what I'm saying, like, many different things that I love to do, like, with, that fascinate me, like, art, you know what I'm saying, graffiti, like, you know what I'm saying, my grandfather was a painter, and as, as a hobby, so, like, I love just to draw, you know what I'm saying, do artwork, you know what I mean, sketches, and I love uh, seeing artwork, you know what I mean, like, just working with artists, period. You know what I'm saying? From the graphics to the, you know, sliding over to the video side to the, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Choreography standpoint of just how I want things to look, just the whole marketing tactics on how you want things to be branded, how you want things to be seen. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, Drummer Boy is a very unique individual, man. It's like a collage of many different things and talents all put in one. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, kind of like the little brother to everybody that they just sit back and just peep game, soak in knowledge, and then put forth my best efforts you know, right. through what I've learned through others. To do the best that you can do, right. you, put, you mix them all in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, I know you got asked this question a thousand times, but just let them know. How did you get your start? Um, I mean, I was born into music. Like my mom tell me a lot of times, she used to have her womb like her stomach right next to the speaker, just letting me hear read the country more. You know what I'm saying? Like Isaac Hayes or Marvin Gaye. Like I used to hear a lot of things from the womb. Like just it was almost like it's muted, and you can still hear. It. Like for real, like I'll be having dreams. Like you know what I'm saying? I'll be remembering certain things. Um, and then, like, my dad is from the orchestra, so, like, you know what I'm saying, I came into trombones and clarinets and bassoons and violas and violins, you know what I'm saying, and, and my mom was in the opera, too, so, wow. like, I was going to operas and nutcrackers and just all of these plays and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, just the way I was brought up, I was always around music. My grandmother was a piano teacher, you know what I'm saying, my other aunt teaches violin, so it was, like, it was just in my nature, it was just in my blood, you know what I'm saying? So, what's something that happened in your life where you really want, you really knew that this is what you want to do? Because you always have those experiences. Like, my experience would probably be me knowing that we had a black president coming up and me saying, wow, how can I really try to do something or make a difference about it? And my thing was just covering the Barack Obama campaign, getting in there, and that's how all this stuff just pretty much Go ahead, check. You want to check your phone? No. Nah, That's good. cool, too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but so that was my experience. That was one of many experiences where I was like, okay, Dad, this is something that I want to do. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate it for the love of it. Mm -hmm. So, what was your thing? I mean, for me, like coming up, I, like on my dad's side, um, my family is like very collegiate, you know what I'm saying? Like all of them are PhDs, masters, you know what I'm saying? My dad is a professor, my aunt professor, you know what I'm saying? Master's degree, wow. you know what I'm saying? Like my other aunt teaches ballet at Temple, you know what I'm saying? Evil Ghost and so like just just the upbringing. My grandfather was a principal. He wrote like, you know what I'm saying? Majority of the desegregation plan for Washington DC and Maryland in mm -hmm. Prince George's County. He got a high school named after him in the whole nine. Wow. in D.C. now, so, like, just the way they instilled in certain education and certain methods in, in the way I was brought up, like, had a, a, a very influential part on, on who I am today. Right. And when I was coming up through high school, like, I was kind of rebelling, like, you know, I was playing clarinet, I was doing, you know what I'm saying, practicing and everything, like, every time I'm with my pop, I can't go out hooping, the, you know what I'm saying, I want to go hooping in the streets, certain things, he would have me practicing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or you can't do this or you can't do that until you've done, done enough SAT tutors or enough speed reading programs. Like, he had me on you know, a, a, a program. Mm -hmm. So, I didn't really tell him when I started getting into the beats and getting into the streets. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, that's like just something that I kind of was doing on my own and kind of built a, a, a name for myself. And that was what was getting me through school. You know what I'm saying? It was because I had something that I loved to do. 
You know what I'm saying? And it was it was making beats. Like I started making beats probably 13, 14. I got an older brother named the same Wayne. He was making beats with Jazzy Faye, all of all of them from Memphis, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? I was just a young dude seeing a lot of different things. And it was like, yo man, I I just knew the information that I had as far as musically. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what I'm saying, I've been making beats in high schools and in and, and elementary you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, cafeterias beating on the on the desk or the table. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or making beats out of trays. So I was like, man, I'm gonna start making beats. It's only right. Yeah. It's only you know right. What I mean? I'm gonna just put together. You know what I mean? The streets mm -hmm. with the orchestra. Right, right. With the opera. Three sixty. Yeah. That's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I can say actually, "Money in the Blood" is probably one of my favorite songs right now. Even though some people may classify, you know, people classify it as a it's an old song maybe or they classify as a new song whatever it's just a song that I always like so how did you create that beat and how did it how did you give it to Wayne? Um, well I gave it to Drake you know the whole the whole chemistry and karma stimulated for me and Drake you know what I'm saying I met him up at Hot Beats um, you know what I'm saying a, a, a very popular studio that we work out of in Atlanta you know what I'm saying um, Met him up at Hot Beach, Drake hit me up like, man, come through, man, you know what I'm saying, I want you to hear some shit, you know what I'm saying, we just vibe out, you know what I mean, so I went up there with a gang of beats, he picked out a couple of joints, and that was one of them that he recorded a hook to, a verse to, I think it was just a hook and a verse when we first did it, mm -hmm. and that joint, um, it got leaked or something like that, but it was on the internet, it's been on the internet for like six months, but then Birdman calls out the blue, like, yo, we want this joint, you know what I'm saying, so Birdman cops it, he got on it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Put Wayne on it, and and Crazy. that was so Drake was really like featured on there. You know what I'm right. saying? Right, but you so. you gave it to him first though. Yeah, I mean That's we right. me, me and Drake made the record, and then mm -hmm. and and of course you know what I'm saying the hook Drake did his thing, and um and then it just became it kind of like blossomed into a, a a big record for Birdman. Right. So you it's know what I'm saying? So how did you coming. feel when you when you hear your song on the radio? Like I know me personally, I'm not a songwriter. Maybe that's some uh, undiscovered talent that I don't know, but mm -hmm. I'm not a songwriter, I'm not a singer, nothing like that. But so I could say I never, I might not have a number one hit record. But how do you feel like when you hear your song on the radio? I mean, it's it's always a blessing, man. It's just like anytime I hear my song on the radio now, it's not like an excitement or anything like that. But mm -hmm. I be like, I'm on time because it, like it seems like every time I'm right on time or right on schedule, mm -hmm. as soon as I jump in the car, one of my records is on. So now it's kind of like, all right, I'm, you know what I'm saying, I'm on schedule, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I used to get excited, be like, oh, shit, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> I'm playing my junk. Right, 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 right. Now, I mean, we, we didn't have so many records and, and, and just, you know, maintaining that consistency over the years, right. you know what I'm saying, of, of being on the radio mm -hmm. and being in those billboard positions. Mm -hmm. So we just keep them coming and, and stay grounded and just, you know what I'm saying, thank God every time and, and keep it moving. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because a lot of people get caught up in records. Like, you can get caught up and be like, oh, man, I got this record. Right, and that's I'm all you're thinking that. about yep. is this one record it as is. opposed mm -hmm. to constantly moving forward. Mm -hmm. Like, and just forgetting about it. So next thing you know, you're getting a check in the mail like, oh, I forgot about that. I forgot about that. And that'll and be your first and your up. last check, too, when people get too high-headed over one hit single right. that they may have. Right. Right, that consistency's not there.